our problem is a lot of people don't watch Irish League football, they want to put it down. And thankfully a few games have been on TV lately, so people have seen it. It's good crack, it's old style football, people are getting stuck in. I think we all love a bit of that. The thing that always amazes me about Irish League football, you know, I meet people who go, oh, it's this, it's that, it's the other, but they don't go to the games. I enjoy the games. Yeah, it annoys me. And the thing is, I mean, if you watch a Premier League game in England, the likelihood is you know who's going to win that game. You watch an Irish League game, you haven't a clue half the time. Well, certainly when Lagan Swifts are playing, you haven't a clue, I can <laughs> well, tell you that, you know. Indeed. I would go down to Stangmore Park all the time like that. But what I like about the lads <coughs> is that <coughs> you go to Irish League, the lads give it all they've got, the vast, vast majority of the players that are out there. Very much so. And you've got to remember, you know, they're working all week. They're, you know, they're maybe training three nights a week after work. I mean, the commitment they show is incredible. And you see some of the prima donnas in England. What? I mean, this is a proper football. And, and Gareth, B- uh, Gareth Bale going for a world record. Like, I, I, I can't believe that because uh, that fellow wouldn't even... In my opinion, he wouldn't make a world 11 and yet he's the most expensive footballer in the world. It, it just shows what football is, though, isn't it? I mean, it's not really about football anymore. And that's why the Irish League's sensational. Well, listen, talking about the Irish League, uh, the odds from McLean's, uh, they have the, the uh, defending champions, Cliff and Villa Evans. Linfield, 7-4. to four, Portadown, 15-2. to two, Crusaders, 12. So after that, you just take your choice. Yeah, I... I Cliftonville are obviously favourites and rightly so, they were sensational last year, great football. This year not so much, they haven't really got into their stride yet. Um so I, I would if I like if I was gonna put a bet on it and I have done, um my man would go Linfield. Now they're poor, poor start, but they're kicking into gear. Yeah, you say they're kicking into gear, you know, Waterworth clearly is a a major signing for them as Hatzik there uh, in, in, the, in the most recent game was very significant but whenever you've got players like Boyce and Gormley you know Cliftonville have to be looked at don't they? W- without a doubt because they're always going to score goals my fear would be if one of those two were to get injured I don't know what they have there's Dermot O'Carroll who can come in probably the best striker in the league with his back to goal but you need goals and I don't think Dermot O'Carroll brings that Chris Canell signed a new contract but again Chris is 36 he's been out of the game for a year I don't know if you could throw him in and rely on him in that sense um, great person to have alongside one of the other ones, but I mean Liam Boyce started to look like himself at the weekend. Joe Gormley scored eleven goals already this season. I mean that that's incredible, and he he probably will be the top goal scorer. But for me, it's still Linfield. I was going to ask you, well, why is it still Linfield? You know, because I had a hesitant start, and even read and, and heard people that you know the usual Linfield win one game and Big Davy out. I never heard the like of it. Well, it, it's ridiculous. It's frankly <coughs> ridiculous yeah. to even suggest David Jeffrey should be sacked or anything. But the reality is, had they lost to Glen Torn in the fourth game of the season, he would have been sacked. Um, I have no doubt it whatsoever about that. Um, but they had a great campaign in Europe. They won three games in a row in Europe for the first time ever. No Irish League clubs ever done that. But it was kind of a false reality because the European game is so different. You're not going to get the same time in the ball in an Irish League game. So I think a lot of the new players were playing in Europe and thinking, oh, well, we've already jailed. This is great. And then a reality check because they play Portadown, they play Crusaders, <laughs> yes. they play Cliftonville, they play Glen Torn. You're like, oh, hold on a second here. That's right, yeah. Half a second on the ball of your life. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> I, they've taken a little while. But then, you know, they've played the bottom two clubs and they've got a couple of wins. Um, I think they're going in the right direction and as you say Andrew Waterworth what a signing he could be um, I wouldn't get totally excited yet it's one game admittedly a hat-trick it's a good way to start but um, if he can score the goals I think Linfield will win the league Now I, I was talking to a couple of people knowledgeable people last week and I haven't seen them play yet this season but they, they think Portadown really really have a real opportunity this year Portadown will do well They'll, I, I would fancy Portadown to get into Europe they definitely will not win the league Um They've got three players in attack. They've Gary Twig is probably the best finisher in the league. Kevin Branoff is probably the best, the, the most talented player in the league. And uh, Darren Murray helps them from the right hand side or as a central striker. I just can't see them having a big enough squad to challenge for the title. You're talking about people not having time in the ball. I, I like Branoff. <coughs> he strikes me as a player who can almost make time. Very much so. Every time <coughs> he gets the ball, he, Ronnie McFall would always say he has no peers in the game. And it's right because when he gets the ball, no one has a clue what he's about to do. And I don't even think Kevin knows half the time. Um, but he can score goals, he creates goals. He works a lot harder than maybe he gets credit for as well. Um, the problem with Kevin is when he isn't in a game, I think he goes missing sometimes. And he maybe gets frustrated because of his talent. And there's no one there who can match his talent. And that must be frustrating. Now, early doors, Glen Avon as well. <coughs> they did. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> can you have to edit there? Okay. Glenavon as well. Gary Hamilton made some great uh, uh, signings, you know, uh, during the the close season. Glenavon are doing powerful well. They are the the entertainers of the season, certainly because they're scoring a lot of goals. They're also conceding a lot of goals. 
Um, I saw a great tweet before the season started saying, I've just seen the Glenavon squad there, I really fancy them to win the league in 2004 because they've signed loads of people who are like <laughs> <laughs> the worst part of 30. And, and to me, you know, it's experienced heads, they'll score goals, they will do all of that. My fear would be come Christmas time, those 36 year olds, tired legs, maybe a couple of injuries, and I think they'll, they'll slope off. But it, top six will be success. I was going to say, we're sitting here now on McLean's TV, and of course they sponsor Glen Torn. Glen Torn are going through a lot of problems, you know, on and off the park as well, too. Like, and I suppose, uh, from their point of view, they'll be even, I think they'd be happy enough if they got a top six, top four, wouldn't they? I think top four would be sensational for them. Top six, they have to be in. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, my fear with Glen Torn now would be that they lack a bit of a cutting edge up front. Um, the midfield looks good, and their defence. It's getting there. They've got one of the best goalkeepers in the league. But I just don't know if they can score enough goals to mount any sort of a challenge. Again, like last season, they won the Irish Cup. I think that'll be their best hope for success this year. Ball and Mallard, they went to Portadown, got completely and utterly hammered. And then they come back and then they win at Coleraine with uh, Andy Crawford. You know, I've been up there in Ball and Mallard a few times. Sensational uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. The whole drive up there. They really are a credit to the league. Like, they are worth watching, you know, they, they play good football, ball no matter. They're super, but it, it comes from a team who have been together for many years. You know, it, it isn't just a team who magically came into the top flight and started winning games. You know, for three years, four years, maybe even five years, a lot of those players have been together. And that's what shows. The big thing is, after they lost to Portadown, Whitey Anderson, their manager, went to see Northern Ireland in Luxembourg. <laughs> so, obviously, it wasn't a great week for him to watch football. Uh -huh. But maybe him being away just for one night, little change of a voice, change of a face, maybe helped them. And he came back and just basically his message to them was, right, we lost 11-0, we all know it. Forget it. It's gone. Uh, at the start of the season, we spoke to the likes of Liam Beckett, you know, in the game. And uh, he uh, pinpointed, he went a bit like yourself, Cliffin for an infield, of course, for the league. But he said the new lads would struggle ours and Warren Point. Now, they're getting a few results, but, you know, particularly the likes of Warren Point, having to play their games in Dungan, it has to be yeah. a real drawback. The, the, the two of them really are odds on to go down again, aren't they? Without a doubt. Warren Point have looked good. They're a good footballing team. Um, they play on the break with a bit of pace. <coughs> My fear again is a lack of a cutting edge. And if you don't have that in the top flight and you're not used to playing against those sorts of players, you are going to struggle. And I, I think they will gain a lot of admirers this year, but they will definitely be in the bottom too. But Ards, on the other hand, signed a lot of experienced players. I mean, Warren Point didn't have any players, out, but maybe one or two who had played in senior football. Ards have loads. But Niall Curry decided to keep faith with the guys who got them there and when you do that you run a massive risk and you know they're losing so many goals never mind losing games but they're losing so many goals and I don't think they have enough goals in them to get out of that sort of trouble um, so if, if they don't start picking up soon I, I think it could be a horrible year for them 